This time I'd like to start the board trustees meeting for this evening. Please stand. Thank you. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Honor our children, service men and women. Good evening and thanks for all attending this evening. At this time, I would like to take, thank, excuse me, thank Mr. Bert Cunningham, historian of the 69th Honorary Regimental Headquarters for the Veterans Day Observance, which took place on November 6th, as well as Commander Frank Couches of the William Brandt Returner Post, number 265, for coordinating the Veterans Day ceremony, as well as Jacqueline Bernie Eldringham of the American Legion Auxiliary we distributed poppies to the public in honor of our deceased veterans on Veterans Day. I was happy to hear that so many residents were able to attend. Since there has been some recent discussion about the leaf disposal procedures of the village, I'd like to address this matter. The street department began its leaf collection, and you can check the village website and Facebook page for updates as to when they will pick up leaves in your area of town. Uh, the Parks Department does the leaf removal for the central section, supplemented by recreation and uh, maintenance help, which typically has four crews doing leaf pickup each day. Residents should place only leaves and old plant material, uh, excuse me, only leaves in the street. Other items such as sticks uh, and old plant material may damage machinery and slow them down the operation of the leaf pickup. Uh, avoid parking cars over leaves as this slows the operation considerably. Not to mention that there's also a fire hazard. Do not place leaves on medians and walls as this will kill or damage the grass. Please do not obscure fire hydrants by piling leaves around them. To clarify some of the confusion, landscapers can place leaves in the street from properties worked upon up until the time the village stops collecting leaves, which is usually in early December. Contractors cannot dump leaves from the trucks onto the street. I would also now like to announce the formation of the St. Paul's Committee. The chairman of the committee will be ex-Mayor Brian Devaney, and ex-Village Administrator Bob Shelley will be the vice chairman of this committee. Uh, the list of all the resident volunteers and subcommittees will be published on the Village website and on, in the Mayor's column. I thank all the residents who have volunteered to invest the future of St. Paul's main building. I now call upon the department heads, beginning with Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have nothing on agenda, but I want to bring up a couple items. First, uh, we are collecting toys for tots, so we already have one full box. Uh, we have uh, two, a few more boxes left, and also Village Hall. So if you have any uh, toys, please bring them unwrapped to the Police Department of Village Hall, and we will forward it to the, Marine, uh, to the Marines. Also, um, last week there were, there were two burglaries uh, in the Village. Uh, there is a Nassau County pattern. It started on the North Shore. It's actually, uh, yet last night, it uh, was all the way down, the same pattern, all the way down to Massapequa. So part of this pattern is uh, very simple things we can do to uh, try to avoid being a victim. First thing is, 6 o'clock at night, when you leave your house and it's dark, not too many houses are dark at 6 o'clock, so it is an invitation. Please leave your lights on, have the TV on, radio on, make it always look like there's someone there. Uh, a lot of people, when they leave their house uh, just for a short ride to pick up something, sometimes they won't put the alarm on, they, they'll leave the door open. Please, this is all part of the pattern. Um, so uh, this, these crews work quick uh, and they really want to avoid confrontations if they can. So uh, to help us out, again, if anybody sees anything suspicious, see something on their ring cameras, uh, have a plate number for us. We're getting more calls since these incidents, as well as uh, some other areas in the county. Uh, and we are working with the Barbary Pattern Team of Nassau County Police Department to put all our evidence together and, and get these suspects. So uh, please just take due care uh, at that time. We're, we're looking at 5.30 to about 8.39. That seems to be the uh, sweet spot for them. And because most people do have lights on at their home, they're going to be, be awake and they're going to have lights on. So they, if they see darkness, 
that's when they take a chance. And a lot of times they'll ring the doorbell first and then go right to the back. Most of the hits in the county have been back, back door and back windows. So please, uh, uh, it, it would help us. And uh, people have been great the last couple of days. We've been calling in suspicious cars and uh, we have checked everyone out. Well, thank you for the information. I really appreciate it. Um, next would be Chief Malik. Uh, ain't nothing on the agenda, Mayor. Um, I just want to ensure everyone uh, uses a little more caution on Thanksgiving next week. Uh, Thanksgiving is one of the biggest days of the year for accidental cooking-related fires. Um, with that being said, I hope everyone has a happy and safe Thanksgiving, and you don't need the fire department on Thursday <coughs> for your burnt turkey. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Um, next, a little treasure I need to uh, good evening, Mayor and Trustees. Um, on the agenda tonight, there's only one item. It's a transfer of funds requested by uh, Village Administrator, Mr. Squazzi, and he will cover this transfer um, in the update. That's it. Thank you. Uh, is that your Juvenile Police Superintendent? Good evening, Mayor. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor. Board of Trustees. I also have nothing on the agenda this evening, but uh, if the board has any comments, questions that I can be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mayor, uh, I have no single item on from uh, my office. However, I will be asking the board for a resolution to suspend the rules in order to add four resolutions. Uh, back on October. 21st, this board authorized the making of certain grant applications in connection with uh, establishing equipment for cleaning of the 1 4 dioxin at various wells. Not all of the wells were covered at that time, so we would ask the board to pass essentially the identical resolutions uh, this evening, but to cover additional locations. One at the uh, well numbers, uh, plant number seven, one at the country club, one at wells numbers uh, 15 and 16 and the last at uh, well, uh, plant number nine. So these uh, resolutions authorize H2M using Mr. Swansea as the signator on the grant applications to apply to the federal government for a part of the three billion dollars in clean water funds that are made available under the, uh, the federal uh, budget. And we don't know how much exactly we'll get, but apparently up to about 60% of debt permitted costs are potentially reimbursable under this fund. So if it, uh, if it meets with the pleasure of the board, I will ask that those uh, four items be ended by a suspension of the rules in addition to the consent calendar. Uh, moved uh, by seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And so the four resolutions are added to the consent calendar. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, board and members of the public. Um, <coughs> Mayor, the first item uh, Mrs. Wu passed off to me was the transfer of funds. This item is to request to transfer unused funds from the engineering regular salary into contractual services to fund additional on-call GIS services. Uh, just for the public, GIS is a geographic information system that creates, manages, analyzes, and maps all types of data. JS connects data to a map integrating location data, where things are, with all types of descriptive information, what things are like there. I'm using these funds to facilitate and enhance the documentation of information related to all of those assets, which will allow us to capture details about the life expectancy, bill date, cost, contract, and fiscal year, etc., associated with every asset, and will also aid us in planning the future capital expenditures. I covered this during the budget presentations as well. This data will be integrated into the information layers of our AutoCAD, also known as computer-aided design software used by the engineering department. Under Public Works, item number five, um, every year we look to uh, bring Pratt Brothers on using their competitively bid rates with Nassau Community College uh, to have them on standby during heavy snows so to assist uh, the Department of Public Works uh, so they can help us clear parking lots. So we only need them, we only call them when we need them, and. Uh, like I said, the rates are incredibly good. Um, village Hall Detectives Room Upgrade. Number six is not 
has no cost to us. It is really a uh, clarification of the capital project from 2021 for the Village Hall Protectors Room upgrade to include the installation of bulletproof glass. This was always part of the original project, but the bulletproof glass wording was inadvertently left out of the capital project description. So it's just a wording change. Number seven, Wells in 13 and 14 AOP treatment. The backstory is at the August 19th BOT meeting, the board approved the bond amendment resolution for Wells 13 and 14, 14 located at the RDC Country Club. The amendment was fueled by a market drive, a uh, market rise uh, in prices, and also to remove the existing smaller granular, granular activated carbon, also known as GAC vessels excavate and build the foundation for the new, new larger GAC vessels, and then to enclose these vessels in a permanent structure. In the agenda that was posted on the village website, the first bullet in this resolution requires a voiceover prior to a vote. This is not an award of a bid. The back of the was received in your package, which includes a letter of recommendation from H2M, identifies this as an award of a partial contract under the exemption from competitive bidding requirements adopted by the Emerging Contaminants Emergency Declaration Resolution December 10, 2020. The agenda item this evening is asking for board authorization at the recommendation of H2M to award the partial contract for the excavation and construction of a concrete foundation at Country Club Plant Wells 1314 in the amount of $513,000 to Philip Ross Industry, also known as PRI. There will be a subsequent resolution on a future board agenda to award the remainder of this permanent work. We are working to get this foundation in the ground before the weather changes and to construct the major portions of this work prior to the start of the next golf season, which begins in April of 2022. Mr. B. already covered the suspension of rules. I just want to just clarify that this is an administrative uh, resolution to allow me to act as agent, authorize me to sign these grants and for HRM to submit them. It's uh, without this, they can't submit the grants, which I do on Monday. So it's just an administrative uh, paperwork need. Uh, that's all I have there on this agenda. I'll take any questions from the board. Any trustees have any questions at this time? There's not for this one? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, the transfer of funds for GSI services, this is $20,000 in addition to the original contract? The, in, in this year's budget, I put $10,000 in there uh, just as a placeholder. The thing is, the funds I'm putting here aren't just used by me. It's used, it's used for multiple things. We have we have needs to have GIS on-call services used by engineers, sometimes by the finance department in the assessment area for uh, for our, our, our land segregation. So it's it's a, I don't have it signed. Uh, project plans for this, it's just a resource, a pool of money. What I want to do is bring in uh, Mr. Kobos from H2M, who's been working with the village for years, bring him in, sit down with the engineering team, and then ask for some of the clerical support as well, and teach them how we use JS today, with our input from our own people, and how we can enhance and use it tomorrow to facilitate this data capture that I want to put in place. Because we really don't have the facilities oriented uh, posture. Well, I understand, but my question really is, the original contract before, right? It's been satisfied. Yeah, we have with a twenty thousand dollars more to continue the process. We have uh, we have a contract with them. We ran out of funds. We only got nine hundred dollars out of the original. So this is to put in the tractor service to continue the relationship. And when when we, when we made this payment of the twenty thousand dollars, this is not going. This is not payment. This is going into the account. So when I have work, I, they'll be drawing against this account. But my, my question is. Once we get this limit set for the budget, there'll be no more expenses after this. No, that's not correct, sir. I'm using this to begin the process. I, I see this as an ongoing thing each year until we can take it over ourselves. I'm, right, I'm working with the GIS person and our team to design the way we're going to work in the future. So he's going to train us. So, so some of this is for training. Some of it might be actual work, which he'll give me a proposal. So, I don't, I don't know if I'll need all this or if I'll need more, but we have it. This is, this is part of the strategy. It's a new strategy. But it's not, it's not open ended. I'm just, you know, I don't want to. It. No, it's, nothing's open ended.
Um, okay, then moving on. Are there any citizen comments on agenda items? If you do not have any comments, please state your name and address and come up to the podium, please. This is for agenda items. Anyone on Zoom? Bob Oros. Okay. Go ahead, Bob. Please unmute. Can you unmute? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I thought we'll plan for things that are like Especially uh, the resolution that was done and for uh, exemption of competitive bidding, requiring more contracts to terminate uh, ALP treatment system. Now, is ALP treatment system, are they going to be part of every well, or is it going to be one system that's going to be used for multiple wells? And please explain what an ALP system is. I, I understand it, but maybe the general public doesn't. Okay, I won't go too deep into the science, but AOP stands for Advanced Oxidation Process. It is the only New York State Health Department approved process uh, to remove one for dioxane and to treat uh, PFOS and PFOA, uh, which is a new regulation that uh, started to surface in December of 2018. The village has aggressively uh, sought treatment, designed treatment, and declared emergency, and uh, we are are on the cusp of implementing uh, the system on nine of our ten wells. The tenth well is below the limits, but it's, it's, it's what's known as actionable, which means it will eventually probably need treatment, so it's being designed now that's well nine. Um, this removes one fourth dioxane in two levels known as non-detect, which is the standard we want. It's, it's, not, it's not measurable. Um, we have this treatment in place on on six well wells right now. Um, like I said, nine is being designed. Um, 15, 16 is on construction. Eight and 12 are being tested right now. Seven is online. 11 is authorized work. We took it offline to do some other upgrades. So it's, uh, it's uh, every well in the village, all 10 wells will have the treatment. We only operate nine at a time. Um, 15 to 16 can only operate one at a time because they're too close to each other. So we have 10 wells being treated and uh, it's not a portable unit, it's actually a reactor that's probably in a, uh, a 20 by 15 size uh, building, uh, one story high. Uh, the, water is, the water is taken out of the well. It's, we always test raw samples, whatever the protocols are by the health department. It is uh, hydrogen peroxide, also known as H2O2, is added to the water. It is then passed through this AOP reactor which is built by one company, Canada Trojan, the other one authorized and supplies this equipment in New York State. And uh, it burns off the, the dioxane and then the GAC filters uh, remove the peroxide, returning it back to the H2O that we then treat with uh, uh, chlorine, caustic soda for pH, and we ship out into the distribution system. Now, but, but what's, uh, you say that this treatment system is each well has its own AOP reactor, yes. Okay. And except for, I'm sorry, except for 15, 15, 16 has one reactor, it's only one well can run at a time. Okay. Now, from what I understand, the, the AOP stands for, they were actually, what you're doing is mixing uh, ozone with the water. And then you, you pass the water through an ultraviolet. The arrangement of the system, the lights are one of them, it kills a lot of the bacteria and then it reverts back to oxygen. I mean, that's simply what the system is. Uh, I, I can't, I can't say you're right or wrong, sorry, just, I've gone to the, my knowledge level on this. I gave a high level, I can't talk to the, I never, I never heard ozone mentioned, so I'm not going to say ozone's involved, it's hydrogen peroxide, um, but I can't explain the chemical reactions going on. Okay, well, as you say, my background is a little in science, and I did, I did do research on this as to what this is described, made up of what it does, and apparently that's just what it does. 
Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Rose. Thank you. Any more comments on Zoom? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the October 28th, 2021 special board meeting? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Do you have a second? Do you want to say that? Motion passes. Let's continue. So we'll finish with the agenda items. I'm opening up the floor now to any citizen comments on non agenda items. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I jumped around. I don't think we did uh, the November 4th we did the uh, October 28th, but did we do the November 4th too? No, no we didn't. Right. I think we have to approve the November 4th the regular meeting minutes as well. Now, there were two sets of minutes there, right? Seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Do you have a memo? Was the favor signified by saying aye? Yeah. Is that a motion? Now we move on to the second one. Yes, sir. I believe that uh, the mayor indicated that one item. I don't have the agenda any longer in front of me, uh, but the item number is the number eight under external communications. Uh, to the extent that that appears to be on the consent calendar, I believe that is being removed from the consent calendar. Uh, with the exception of, and however, the permits uh, would remain on. Uh, would remain on. So, item nine and ten would continue on the consent calendar, absent a trustee asking for the removal. Uh, but with the exception of item eight, and inclusive of the four resolutions relating to the grant application, is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Moved by Trustee Delaney, seconded by Trustee Menudo, and uh, Trustee Foley as well. And any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And the motion for the consent calendar passes unanimously. Now we'll move on to the <laughs> non agenda um, the, the, the absolutely may do so, Mayor. Um, however, ordinarily, at this time, you would address the one item that was removed from the consent calendar and determine whether you wish to have a discussion on it, or remove it from the calendar altogether. Yeah, why did we discuss it? I think we're waiting for more information from the uh, building department. Man, we have the information. We did the review as far as what was submitted. Uh, we do have feedback. The comments weren't submitted. Uh, but the main focus is if we're going to extend the outside dining or not. That's the main. main well, although there were some additional sub questions relating to, uh, for example, whether in the winter time um, these facilities would be authorized to have heaters, an extension of the existing agreement would prohibit heaters of any kind. And I wasn't sure, frankly, whether that was the intention of the board. And so there are questions like that that I think you may wish to discuss, but that's the pleasure of the board. Heaters is a broad term. I know that there's a gentleman here from the restaurants, and we did see, and we did see some specs on these little igloos they wanted to use that I think had some sort of heating home. They did. They did. They just plug in, kind of. It's not a propane heater or anything like that, right? It's an oil. Yeah, just so that's that's a, that, that would be my objection. Say, no heaters. This is like a product you buy. Kind of have you looked at Have you looked at the safety 
of what was submitted in the igloos with those heaters? Or do we have to look at that? Or what we have to look at? We have to look at all, all aspects of, of that for safety and for um, egress and for the electric component of it uh, for the heater. So yes, I mean, there was an application submitted that we're still under review. Uh, that's not yet. Been so completed. the appropriate thing to do would they have to defer this until at least the next meeting? We can do that, yes. yes. My, 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 my understanding is that the building departments review the application. If there's incomplete information, and we also requested additional details, which we have not received. That's why I want to remove it from the calendar, because we don't have enough information. So, so then I think we should clarify the point eight. Because point eight says whether or not we're going to extend right. the outdoor. That's not point eight, or what we're talking about now is specifically for them, for their submission, having the Board of Trustee approval. That is much different than what's here. Well, the agenda item is for an extension of their permit. Uh, but in general, isn't it for anybody in the no, it's, no, it's just yeah, because the application was only for two specific for them, And specifically then, it's, it's, it should be worded that once it clears the building department, then we come back here. Right. Yeah, that's, Absolutely. That was, that was my understanding. Let's just, yeah, then let's just run into it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I agree with that. This was enough for a broad approval at this time. This was just to deal with the issues that were brought up in the arena. Am I correct? And the Water Zoo. And the Water Zoo, yes. Yeah, yeah. But the board will recall that in public sessions, there were a number of discussions about things like heaters, about whether or not a structure that stays in place for more than six months becomes a permanent structure whether or not that's a violation of code. There were a number of topics like that that related to the topic of outdoor dining that also bear on the two specific permit extension requests. Correct. They also presented a product they were buying yes. to accommodate Absolutely. outdoor dining. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? So now what we're saying is we want to vet those structures, right. whatever it is. They're actually accessory structures to the primary. Right. And, and then, then once they go through approval there, does it have to come back here, or is it solely on G Mr. Juvenile's approval? As things currently uh, stand, which uh, doesn't mean you couldn't change it, but as things currently stand, the license agreements that are in place would expire on December 31st, So, and the, only the board could authorize the extension of the license agreements with or without modification of yeah. clauses such as EGOs, so, etc. The only other piece was it's a timed event, right? It's getting colder. These guys want to either fish or cut bait, Absolutely. buy those things or not. Right. Yes, so sir. it's getting colder. They want to either invest in this or not. So what do we think of an appropriate time limit is to review this and get it sorted already? Because it keeps kind of rehashing. We're talking about it for months. What do we think we can we can successfully either say yes or no to this? I mean, the, the application not only does it have to go through the, the village building department, it has to also go to the fire marshal as well, mm -hmm. because they're seeing this as a temporary structure for six months. Sure. So that's with that said, it has they have to apply for that application as well, and then have, once I get that approval, I would issue a permit based on that approval. Do, are you guys clear on everything you need to apply for? The fire marshal. Step to the mic. Yeah, maybe get to the mic. Talked to the fire marshal. The um, fire marshal said because of the type of structure that it does not need any permits from them as long as there's no propane under the structure. The structure is electrically electrically heated. They had no issue with it whatsoever. Did did you get something in writing from the fire marshal? Usually they do that. I can get it. I think you should. It was a phone conversation uh, with them. Yeah, please do that. That's important. Yes. Yeah, I think we have to address all the issues. It's a structure. Yeah, uh, uh, there. I spoke to the fire marshal's office as well. Uh, they do need a permit for those because they have temporary structures. So I spoke to the chief fire marshal. I will speak to him again to clarify. So then you wouldn't have to get a permit. <coughs> to the the fire fire uh, I'm not saying that didn't happen, but I also spoke to the fire marshal and I asked him specifically because obviously it would be no issue for us. Take permits now? Yeah, no, that's no, 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 no,
anything that we need to gather? These, these comments are, are, have not been released yet. We're waiting for this okay. meeting for the release comments on based on their submission. So now that I have more detail on what, what we're moving forward, I'll submit the comments that they have to comply to and with, along with the fire marshal approval and application, and then we can... So, so let's be clear. Have they submitted the information you requested? They, only, they submitted their original application, not the, not the comments. So therefore, the you, you've done an analysis of these structures? So you have to give that information to the restaurant owners That's so right. they know what to do? Yes. Please. In addition, at whatever point you make a decision on it, the license agreement has to be executed, and I just need to know what terms to put into that license agreement. How long is it going to be? Are we lifting the uh, requirement of no heaters? That there are a series of questions along those lines. So let me ask the fellow board members, provided these guys clear these hurdles, is everyone even in favor of this, or are we going to make them jump through hoops and then tell them they can't do it anymore? We just got to get real. I don't think it's jumping through hoops. They have to get, you know, uh, something in writing from the fire marshal. Sure. Right? So they go through that. Process so I think if I could come back, are we supposed let me, to? Let me finish if I may. Yeah. So I think you're going to spell out from everything they need so they're clear. And then they're going to get the bat from for us, right? And then we take it from there. Yes. Well, so, I think so, so Lewis's point. Speaking from there, it's very, I mean, these guys are trying to run a business. We could probably indicate to them if it's likely to pass or not. Should they satisfy all said requirements? Yes. I think if they, you know, uh, satisfy the requirements of the fire marshal and what we're asking for, uh, then I think we you know, I would, I would be in agreement with that. Okay. I just don't want to get these guys saying it. They're trying to run it as this. They want to know whether or not to spend how much of these things cost? 50 grand or something? 40,000. So, you know what I mean? So, I just want to know if you, they get through it. And, and believe me, I'm a believer in the process of needing to get the required. Uh, you know approvals, but if they're going to get those approvals and they come back and say we're not we're not a, you know going to pass outdoor dining anyway, we sent them on a wild goose chase. I just want to make sure that you know provided they do everything they're supposed to, there's a light at the end of the tunnel for them. Sounds like there might be, so I'm happy. We, we need approval from the Department of Buildings. Sure, but the structures are safe. Right? Zoning has to review it. You have to review it. Fire department has to review it. But all those re reviews are done, and we pass muster, that information comes to the board, the board will decide. That's fine. But, Mayor, I just, I just, I'm certainly in favor of it. My only concern is that it's for another year. I mean, is everybody... Well, that's, that's going to be discussed, too, trust me. Oh, okay. It may not be for a year. Fine, okay, that, that's fine. And and don't that's forget, there's a law that says I agree. the structure is only allowed to be up for six months. I agree with you, Mayor. I, I just, I have Let's a not go back. I agree. Give it for, please. I, I agree with you 100%. My second question is, as I read this, this only affects Novita and Wadazui. Are there other applicants who want to extend past December 31st? I know they can't answer that question. No. But I believe no, that haven't drawn the You haven't got anybody else. No. Okay, fine. This is the only one in town we really does. This is the only one. Okay, that's fine. Okay. It's the only so you do the research, get everything together, and respond, get information to the board, and then we can act on it. Thank you. So do you want to table this to the next meeting? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Okay. We'll move on to the non-agenda uh, items. Yes, Correctly. All the agenda items are now disposed. We're discuss, discussing non agenda items only, so if anybody in the audience wants, wants to come up and discuss a non agenda item, please state your name and address. Anybody in the audience?
uh, started a chain of events that basically resulted in the Nassau County Department of Health coming into our home, testing everything, including the water. Um, when they tested the water, uh, they found that it had extremely high uh, lead levels. For reference, the action goal limit is uh, 15 parts per million. Our highest level test in our home was 118 parts per million. Uh, we've now replicated those results three times over. Once more with Nassau County, once um, that we hired our own independent contractor to come in and sample the water, and then once through uh, H2M through Garden City. Um, at this point, we've asked multiple times about any kind of action plan. We've also been made aware through people who have acquired tests from New York State's free testing program that there are other homes in the area that have also tested high for lead, um, one of which was even higher than our lead level. Um, my, even anecdotally, my parents live in the estate section. Um, my mom, uh, when we found out about my lead level, started avoiding tap water. Um, and after three weeks of avoiding it, she went and had her plasma lead sample tested, so that's from her own blood. Um, and she had borderline lead poisoning as well. They do not have a lead service line, there's no lead in the home. I guess our question is, is there a plan to discuss this with residents? Um, we still have not identified a cause. Um, from the research that we've done, the conversations that we've had with various water specialists, uh, the best guess that we have is that it could be something to do with water treatment. Um, so I guess we're here tonight just to ask if any headway has been made, if there have been any updates. The last discussion that we had was that the wells had been tested, that they were negative. Um, but that's a very small component of a much larger problem. Um, so we're just looking for updates here. Ralph, do you want to address this? Or? Yes. Just to continue. Uh, Andrew it, it, it was at the meeting, the EPOA meeting, and as a result of his comments to me, which I passed on to Ralph, um, and Ralph really went to greater detail. Um, Ralph, why don't you? Yeah, so first of all, I, I did speak to your mother on October 20th, I think it was. That, um, it was the first information the village or myself had received on this topic. I spoke to, uh, is it Smith? Is it I think I forgot her last name, her last name, but sure. Riffle, that's a Riffle, so Mr. Riffle, she called me and spoke for a half hour. She explained to me uh, very specifically in greater detail what her daughter Mary Ellen just, uh, Mrs. Ariel just explained. Um, I listened intently and then she was repeating herself. I said, uh, Mr. Riffle, I have to get off the phone. I need to call the county health department. I need to jump into action. So she gave me the contact name. I immediately called him when I hung up. My next call was H2M. I asked them to test all of our active wells, because some of our wells are offline. All of our active wells, where the water enters into the distribution system, which is the mains on the ground, it comes into people's taps eventually. I, it was tested the next morning, starting at 8 o'clock, less than 24 hours after the phone call came up. Those tests came back with lead at non detect. In my early presentation on AOP to Mr. Orwell's, I mentioned non detect is really a standard, it's not detectable. <coughs> So um, it doesn't mean we're entirely off the hook. The, the county is not identifying to us any actions that we need to take. Uh, they have not written their final report. Um, the county called me back on the 21st that afternoon because the person I called was not the person I guess they wanted speaking to me. The person we used to speak to on uh, health and related matters called me back, William Provanka. His name is uh, <coughs> himself Bill. I had Bill myself. Joe Tadaro from H2M, um, Jim Roberts from H2M, he was from the New York City water system, and uh, another gentleman um, from H2M who deals with regulatory actions. Uh, his name is Paul, I forget his last name. We discussed it at length. Um, they had conducted a test in the home, and as reported, it was high lead concentrations. I think the refrigerator felt they had 118 parts per billion. Um, we asked them if they needed us to do anything. We told them what we had done. Uh, they were very pleased that we were taking, taking this aggressive action, but it was not at their request or direction. We also scheduled with the Zariels to go in their home. I think that test was conducted on 11-4, somewhere in there, Wednesday or so ago. Those tests, we had them expedited. We had them by the uh, late Friday that came in, and I notified you on the 10th after, after I had Mr. Dodaro uh, 
we detected lead the same way the county did. I wanted to tell you about the test a bit, just to edify you a bit, because when we talked to the Nassau County Health Department, they explained to us that the initial test they took in the home not only consisted of water, they tested utensils, pots, paint. So it's more than just water that you test as a potential source of lead. Um, that's one point that should be known. It might not just be water as a source. Number two, they told us that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, in December of this year, next month, should be releasing new guidelines where the lead test is more <coughs> robust. So instead of taking two 50 milliliters of water, they would take five liters. I believe the concept behind this more robust test is because the water that's in the plumbing of the house and sitting in the main, they want to clear that so they can, I'm sorry, the service line, they want to clear that so they want to get to the main water coming from the system. So the more robust test, uh, they, they grew over time. When they got to the fifth liter, I believe the levels were, were below the 15 parts per billion, which is the threshold. So we talked to the county about that result. In their preliminary reporting to us verbally on the phone, again, I was not alone on the phone with them, I had Mr. Dare on the second call with them. They were indicating, but they have not said that they believe the lead service line may be the primary culprit here, but it's, I can't say that. It's not my investigation. All I know is the facts I have is that when I tested our water system, lead was not detected. I'm, I'm testing it every month. We're doing another test on the 21st of uh, November. December, January, so I'm doing four tests on a test that the state requires once every three years. In, in addition, as a result of the POA meeting, uh, we brought it to my attention. I also talked to Ralph on Wednesday morning, and one of the things that he pointed out was, is there any possibility, and correct me if I'm saying this the wrong way, is there any possibility that the steps we take to purify the water for dioxin and everything else could any of those steps or chemicals, whatever we do, have be the cause of it? So Ralph has been in contact, and you can speak to this, Ralph, as, at, at, at our request, Ralph has been in contact with H2M, and I don't think they've reported back to you, but ask them to look at that. If there's anything that we're doing that would cause corrosion when it got to the house. And we, we are in the process of doing that. I don't think you have an answer yet. Well, just so you know, I do have H1 on the call. In case there's a question I can't answer that you need more detail on, or if I, Joe, if I say something incorrect or stray from facts, I want you to jump in and correct me. <coughs> so, number one, had your mother not called me, I would not have known that case because the county did not contact us based on the, I believe the doctor reported in the law as a reportable thing. So the doctor reported as he or she should have. They went to your home and scheduled the test. And they had the results, which I believe they, they verbally communicate to you, because I haven't seen anything writing yet. And which I don't prefer, I prefer it be written down because, because when you start speaking and hypothesizing, those hypotheses I believe have spread as fact throughout the community and that they're not validated yet. So that's just unfortunate reality of, of life. The thing is that, and I, and I really feel for your position here, believe me. Um, so anyway, they, they conducted the second test and they did find lead and I sent an independent lab to me because I didn't want my employees or an H1 employee conducting the test so that there was no question that it was independent. So I, I, I sent Pace Lab, which is a state certified lab that we use for all of our testing uh, to perform the test. I asked them to perform the same test that Nassau County performed, minus the refrigerator, because the county's old refrigerator filter had to be ch had been changed, so it's going to come up with high levels anyway. So we did everything but the refrigerator test. Just, just to clarify with that, um, even the water that came directly from the town um, after a one minute flush, um, and even after several minutes, was still up in the like, 80s, 70s. Oh, no, and your house, by the way, because my water plant operator came to see me, because you know, we were discussing this in terms as well. The, the water on Heath Place is on the east side of the street, and I believe it has on the west side. So it's like a 65 or 70 foot run just for the service line before it gets inside your internal plumbing. So, that's a lot of water to clear. And I don't know the details of your home, but now you have low flow faucets, which don't push through the same amount of water. 
when these tests were originally done, so maybe the water's not, the timing element might be stretched out because the water's not pushing through as fast. There's so many factors. The solder, in 1986, I think it was, they changed the solder rule. It couldn't be 50 50 anymore. I think it had to be 5% lead and 75% zinc. I don't know the rules. All I know is that I'm sure most of the homes built before 1986 have the old solder in there. I'm sure that homes, your home was built 15 years before it was born. We know it has an electric service line. Um, so I've been asking the county, uh, I have I have HRM researching the soon to be released and published EPA guidelines because if I'm going to start anything on a village wide level, I need to know that if I have to go into a house or send something into a house or ask you to have something done in your house, I can know what data I have to collect because I can't go back two, three, four times to each house. So we're looking for an understanding of what the guidelines, besides the test that was conducted in your home by myself, a mechanic, or Pacey County, I'm trying to find out what it is they, they're going to be at, expecting us to do. I'm trying to come up with a communication plan for other residents. Uh, you know, in our annual report every May, there's a section there from New York State that says, you know, lead service lines contribute lead to the water, it's not safe, blah, blah, blah. You know, so that comes out every year. I, I know people won't read the, the report end to end, but um, so we're going to try to do our best to educate people. Once we identify the source or sources, we will act. The, the Water Department, uh, the, the Health Department was very happy that we were treating this aggressively. Like I said, they still today, a month later since I talked to your mom, that was the 20th of October, 28 days ago, they still haven't asked us to do anything. We have, and we've written emails to them, we've initiated all the phone calls with them, we have shared all of our test data with them, and they are sharing their test data with us. I did find out yesterday in an email from Mr. Obanka that New York State Health Department, they're about to release a report to you. But New York State called and said we received 100 tests from Garden City, of which 25 had high levels of lead and 75 didn't. I contend that if the water was contributing to it, that there'd be 100. I would, I would disagree with that. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's just, I'm just 25% is a pretty large sample size. I mean, it's a good it So I asked, I, uh, I asked Nassau thousands. County, do you have the addresses? No. Who conducted the test? We don't know. Were the test conducted according to what they done by it? Residents with home test kits were done by lab. So there's all these questions. Likely that is the case, but I think that people have been driven to request these free testing kits and, and seek this out on their own in the absence of any kind of guidance from the village. And I can definitely appreciate the need to wait for guidelines from the state. And I think this is, you know, not to like, you know, give a pun here, but a very fluid situation. Um, but at the same time, we're talking about a public health problem, and I don't really think it's appropriate to wait till December for some kind of guidelines to trickle well, down to the New York State. We're waiting for recommendation from Nassau County. But by not notifying people, I think it's that there's a potential. Could, could, I ask you, could I ask you a question? Have you guys tested your service line? So we know, we know that our service line is a lead service line. We're also aware of the fact that the majority of the town has a lead service line. In any of the major uh, instances, I, I, I'm not sure that the majority is, but we don't know. So I, I, I did ask. Can even, I just ask her to finish? Majority. Sorry, can yeah, you I'm just keep talking? So, um, in any of the major is issue or episodes of lead contamination in water systems across this country, whether we're talking about Newark, Denver, Flint, the issue is not the lines; it's the treatment of the water. You put not in our conversations with water experts from Nassau County, from New York Environmental. Um, you can have lead lines, and they're there for decades, and they build up all these mineral deposits, and it's safe to drink that water. But if the water coming in is corrosive, then it starts breaking down that protective barrier. Um, that's exactly what happened in Flint. The pH dropped from a treatment level of 8 to 7.3 at the worst of the crisis. Denver, Colorado treated their pH of their water to 7.8, and then in March 2020, they started noting an uptake of homes testing for high lead. So they adjusted their pH to 8.8. Boston and the suburbs of Boston treat their, buffer their water to a pH of 9.6 to make the water safe. So I guess my, what I'm asking, and what I think would be, you know, in my non-expert opinion, just in the research that I've had to do as a consequence of trying to protect my family um, and community, is for Garden City to, while we're waiting for these recommendations to come down, to have an expert consultant come in and evaluate how we're treating our water, what 
anti-corrosive agents we're using, and whether or not treating the water to a pH of 7.6 is appropriate when you have an aging water infrastructure. Okay, so all these questions you're asking, we've been dialoguing on with the county and among ourselves. Uh, one of the things that Direct Aid is going to do is to do a corrosion control study where the full chemistry of the water and treatment and all that sort of pH, alkalinity. Uh, the last one that was done in Guard City was in the early 90s. I asked why early 90s. That's because what, that's probably when the lead and copper rule came out and we made everybody do it. But it's not required annually or biannually. It's not required at all. So I talked to the National County about it. I said, I'm going to do this because I'd like, you know, like to have a new set of data. Mm -hmm. So they said it's a good idea. So again, my offer, yeah. they agree. Yeah. So that's, that's going to occur. We're, catching our, we're testing our inorganic compounds, um, they call them IOCs. Um, we test them once a year. I believe our test, our annual test, was conducted in August and September. It was fine. Uh, I'm having them conducted, then we did the lead test October 21st, which was fine. I'm having the IOCs repeated this month, next month, in January, just to convince myself that there is nothing in the chemistry that is speaking out what needs to be done. Again, um, Nassau County is going to issue a report. They'll probably say change your lead line. They'll probably say change your refrigerated filter. Um, they're, we're monitoring our pH and alkalinity. It's within the proper ranges. But nonetheless, we're trying to understand the phenomena that occurred in your home and how it applies to others. The lead service line issue is not you mentioned a lot of homes may happen in our city. We we have to do a triannual test, a tri baseball training. Every three years, New York State makes us test lead. We test 30 homes throughout the community. Uh, you have to hit a certain percentage uh, to be in compliance. We met at 17 and then 20. So the county tells us all your numbers are good. Yeah, but so, it's interesting that when you expanded to 100 homes just recently, that 25 out of 100 had. We didn't homes. do those tests. No, I know, but those are the ones from the three New York State testing kits. But if you're talking about sam a sample size of 30 homes in a town with, the last number that I saw was like 7,400-ish? It's about 7,500 homes. Yeah, 7,500 homes. That's a sample size of 0.004%. And I don't really, you know, in a situation like this where there is a red flag, I think it warrants a further investigation and casting a broader net. And if we, you know, we take these 100 results for cat test kits that I've gone in at face value, we can see a 25% positive rate, which is high. That's definitely significant. Twenty-five percent of seventy-five hundred. So the state, the state has There's information. The state has information. The county received it yesterday afternoon, just after my phone call to them. They sent it to us. I sent it to H2M. I said, "Okay, now we have the information that has been gathered somewhere in the village from residents. We don't know how it was gathered, what was done, but it's pointing to this three one thing." I said, "So I asked the county for information. I said, I don't even know. I can't even contact these people to talk to them and see, you know, what." You know, so I don't want to let you know that. So we're not sitting idle waiting for the county. We acted on our own to test the water. We made an appointment to go into your home. We're having H2M investigate the new guidelines. We can act on them before they can be released. Just be sure we capture everything that's going to be required of us. I have Giuseppe, the superintendent of the building, going through all of his records, historically back to 1920, wherever the records go, to see, to investigate plumbing permits and see, because, you know, the house, we have houses that have records that might have no plumbing permits, but anything without that data, we assume would have a lead line. Uh, if your house is built before 1970, you might have a lead line. I don't know the thresholds. One knows that I think everyone who's worried about a lead service line, I uh, recommend they have the plumber come in and check it. We're trying to figure out what communication, I've asked the county, how do you communicate this to a, a person like yourselves? or to a community or to a neighborhood. How do you communicate this so that, you know, I don't want to create a panic, the sky's falling. I think you should, though. At a certain point, we have to stop screwing yeah. around. I, I, to be honest, I don't believe there's a single, single bigger issue in the town. More and more contaminants and, and things are being discovered in everyone's drinking water on Long Island every day. They rush, you know, we get guidance to rush to treat them as as these guys are saying, there could be downstream effects to that. And I've said this before, I know everyone throws a shoe at me when I say it, we should be selling our water system to experts who know what to do and know how to deal with these problems. And all you guys yawn and roll your eyes, but we are outmatched, okay? My wife, it's no secret, she has cancer, 45, stage four cancer, for no reason whatsoever. 
Conley deals with the same similar issue for no reason whatsoever. So what, what should we be doing? Yeah, say, hey, we've got some high uh, lead levels. Maybe you guys should contact your plumber. If you suspect it, get a home kit. Check it. Call your plumber. See if you're, you've got a lead line feeding your house. Why would we not say that? This is an extremely time-sensitive issue. For me personally, the very highest risk of exposure is the first trimester of pregnancy. If we can even protect a few families from having a dangerous metal contaminant, potentially give their child cognitive and behavioral disability for the rest of their lives, I think it's worth potentially spreading alarm. This is something to spread alarm. Lewis, I agree with you. Why don't we do this? No, let's no, 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 finish. Awesome. We have a distribution system in the village. We have water mains. The water mains are not made of lead, am I correct? That's correct. Okay. There's, there's the no distribution, fire. the water mains connect to your house. There's a service line. Depending on the distance of your house, that line can be 100 feet, 50 feet. The diameter can be different. It can be 2 inches, 3 inches, whatever it is. Did you say you renovated your house? We purchased our home after it had been completely renovated. It was totally renovated? Yes. Was the service line in? <clears throat> no, we know that the service line is the original service line. Did they have, for example, any exotic fittings, plumbing fittings that came from another country? Yes. Well, you have to look at all those conditions, obviously, as a homeowner. And I agree with you, that should be posted, homeowners should check. The first thing, when I heard about this, I said, Ralph, check, check the wells to make sure there's no lead. That was the first thing he had to do. Second, I said, everyone should call a licensed plumber to check to see if they have a lead line. For sure. Oh, oh, oh. Right. We you should, should check, recommend just check it. And if you do have one, then you should make some arrangements to move that lead line, right? And then provide also a house filter in addition to it. Once you make the change, provide a house filter. You get rid of other contamination. I, I get I get it, obviously I agree. I just don't think we we all can put a finger on exactly where even this is coming from. And I understand we say, yeah, there's a lead supply line to the house. I get it. But the point is, we go, oh, none of the mains have any lead pieces, right, Ralph? Ralph, you know that for sure? You're going to bet your life on that? Listen, I Hell no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We don't know what's under there. I, and the, my point is, is that, again, we keep the state, we all know, we all that the state read, basically crammed the, 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 the one for dioxane mitigation down everyone's throat before we even said, hey, what's one for dioxane? Remember, Five years ago, no one even knew what that was. And it's in everything, okay? It's in Tide, it's in your shampoo, it's in everything, right? So we, we, we got the, uh, the, the UV lights, we're pumping in the, the hydrogen peroxide. To their point, maybe it's, you know, you're, we're rattling the cage downstream and, you know, citing some of the, uh, the, the natural barriers that had built up over the lead components over the years, and now they're being exposed again. We have no, but the last thing, we have no way of knowing. And my only point is, you know, we, we've got this water department we've had it for a very long time, and you know what? When it was as clean and easy as, you know, dropping a straw down there and slurping up what we need, it seems like you can run a neighborhood water department. I think we're a little outmatched now. I think we should start to really consider either a complete different look at this or selling it to a professional water authority that has scientists on staff and mitigation efforts and understands really what they're up against because we do not. I, I, point I, I disagree with you. You're not kind of, we don't. We don't. I gotta say, I want to just say first they, of all, Ralph, may, may, may I make a suggestion? Sure. We know that we, we have already asked H2M to take a look at what they suggested that what we're doing is causing some of the problem. In the interim, why don't we put a flyer out? to everybody just outlining this so that everybody in the village knows officially from us that we suggest testing on the village website and the village website and in your column. in your mayor's column and let everybody get tested. Yeah. I also did get a free kit but the address and people need to be help to help to I think we need I think we need a me also the expert consultant. Yeah. Right? An expert we consultant need before before we make the leap and sell our water system. Someone else. Well, believe me, a real expert. I'd be, I'd be opening the door if anyone wants to come in and buy it. But I just want to, I just want to state, trusting you, not to argue, but our operation is putting out a good product. We meet all the standards. I know you do. I just remember when I say that I'm not dogging the water department. 
I'm just saying it's so complex now. You know, we, there, there are harmful agents in the water that we don't even know about. It's true. One for that I said, we didn't even know what it well, the was. Well, the life reports are I'm being honest with you. I don't even give the water to my dogs. Uh, that's not a joke. No, no, that's a, there are so, there are unregulated things. I mean, the water report talks about things that are regulated. Things that are unregulated. The EPA regulates some things, and the New York State takes it like dioxane. They don't have a standard. New York State standard. Not allowed usage of it, have they? They're no. still allowed. To New York State, state standard. It's still only no, so dioxane in New York State is one part per billion. In, in Alaska, it's seven parts per billion. In Pennsylvania, it's six parts per billion. Connecticut, seven parts per billion. New Jersey, it's one. You know, so it's like it's all over. The EPA does not. And that's my point. That it's it's so complex. I'm not criticizing. I know you do everything that New York State wants us to do, <laughs> and then some. And then some. My point right. is, at what point do we just say the operation of this? And the cause and effect is just too great, and we need outside help. I mean, we, you know, this can't be Ralph's part-time gig is to run water. No. It's getting a little nutty now. Yeah. And you know, it's it, you, you hear stories like this. This freaks me out. And, you know, we talk about you know how how our property values are are affected by this or by that, or how about if you know, can't drink the garden water? Yeah, I'm not, 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 not sure. It's, I'm not sure it's a treatment issue at this point. You, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. No, no, no. Listen. Well, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know if it's the lines. We don't know if it's treatment. I don't know if you know. There's a, a big light bulb stuck there somewhere from the Civil War. I have no idea what it's called. It needs to be. A, so we point. so we get a consultant to come in and investigate this whole thing. We have H2M. I know we have H2M. We already started. I know we have H2M. We made the end to that. And we're outside. To your point, Bruce, maybe it's we come up with a, a framework where we say, all right, every, we're going to go around and check all suppliers. Or by a certain date, you've got to figure out whether or not you've got a, you've got a supply line that has a line. Or, you know, again, I'm just conceptualizing because I'm not a water expert, but we need, we need a plan, and we have to start being proactive. If I may add one more thing, in the same spirit of not having H2M test the water in our home, having an independent company, I do think in the sake of transparency and not having a conflict of interest that it, I think it would make everybody feel better if it were a completely independent consultant to come in and do the testing. And say what you mean, not H2M. Not H2M, yes. So, I mean, just one thing that you want immediately, we all agree to just put out a public service announcement about lead in water, encouraging people. It's in our water report anyway that people should be, but, you know, let's highlight it because we have this I think information right now. Very helpful is either the mayor's column, obviously on the website, but also put where people can get that free New York State kit yeah. in there, and then, and then if people read this in the paper and they want to check it out, they, that they can do so easily. <coughs> I don't have I don't have another independent lab. Number one selected, number two I don't have funding for it, so I'll have to come back to this board. But that's not until December 9th, So you want you want to authorize me to you mean for the free kits? The not the kits. I'll, I'll contact. I mean, they're recommending we have someone independent outside of our own H-Trump consultant. So you're talking about hiring another. No, 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 they didn't say that. Their, their independent consultant is to analyze our whole situation. No, no. What I believe that's what they said. I think what they're saying is independent kits that we can get for free. From no, your what I think you're asking for is an independent group to test the water. Other than H-Trump. Other than H-Trump. Am I correct in what I understand like, you to say? To test the water, but to test all the what uh, Mr. Minuto was saying, all the components of the water, how we're treating the water, what are, whether the pH that we're treating, the buffering the water to is appropriate given the age of our water infrastructure. Yeah, we're, all we're we can look for one, but I'm not sure. All of our tests, all of our tests are, we, we take water samples and they're tested by an independent New York State certified lab. H1 doesn't do any testing. They don't take the samples. They're taking samples down by request for this particular issue, but our regular testing is done by our own people. Um, you know, and they, 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 I mean, there's lots of testing too. They don't just turn on tap, they have to burn off. I mean, there's, there's there. certainly water consultants and specialists in this area of the country. New York, New York, New Jersey have I'm not, I'm not yeah. uh, close to that. Yeah, I'm just saying we, we have consultants that understand our system, the treatment of the water, 
it meets standards with this particular problem. Um, they've been partnering with me. Nassau County, like I said, would knock on the door asking them, what do you think is going on? You know, if you if you if you're familiar with your sinks or kitchen aerators, they can be soldered core there. It's, you know, they're supposed to be flush. You've got a little bit of solder in there that broke off from your system that's contributing. There's so many little factors uh, besides pH and alkalinity. Uh, so nonetheless, it could be a, a, a assortment of factors combining into a perfect storm. And it's probably house by house specific to that home. So I, I, what I'm saying is that if I, if, I test the, if I test the water that I'm pushing out into the mains uh, and it's let free, that's a good sign. To Mr. Menudo's point, uh, I didn't put the mains in the ground. I know they're made of uh, you know, steel and concrete, but they don't solder the mains. So, but, you know, the only other place I know that there's lead in the system, and that's in the fire hydrants, the inners of fire hydrants, but they don't interact with the water that's going to the homes. They're only turned on when you open them up and the water comes out. So that's a closed area, and those are all brass fires. They're not contributing to the Also, system. Ralph, we're, we're certainly not the first um, you know, municipality to experience lead in the lines. Do we do any benchmarking studies? I, can I tell you, trust me, I don't want to, I, I, what I don't want to do I know it's made everyone's... No, no, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I've been asking the county, what what can I do? What have you done in other communities when you run courses? What do you tell the homeowners? How do I go about, <coughs> besides educating people? I've asked them for a, a, a template form letter. I have issue I'm working on a piece with you now, a piece that uh, Trustee Flanagan just mentioned. We're trying to put together a communication piece. We can mail it to people, put it on the website, send it to PAs, whoever we want, communicate. But at the end of the day, the service lines are owned by homes. So if it's a service line problem, they can filter out the water, they can replace the service line. They could run the water for 10 minutes to clear any lead out of there. There's things that the EPA and the state recommend you do if you have a lead issue. But right now, everyone seems to be pointing to the water department as the problem when it should be downstream in the home. So sure. since we don't know, we are exploring all avenues. I have not excluded anything as a point of research from what was discussed tonight. Is there any precedent of, like, let's say we do survey and we find out 35% of the homes in town have lead lines. That's what I'm having just have to look at now. Okay. Let's say we find out. Is there any, like, similar to the other grants you got for the one for the housing? Is there state funding we can go after? Or so there's a good grants question. you can get? Because that's actually a lot of stuff to change those out. And I'm not so sure. If you're talking about, to you're talking about these merchants, five to ten to fifteen thousand dollars per line. Per house. Depending on the length of the line. That's what I mean. So is there like. But, but, so is that's not. The lines are not ours. No, I know. But that's what, I, what I'm asking. Getting some help for the yes. homeowner. So yes. in the community I live in, Glen Cove, I received a flyer as a homeowner from the city saying, we want you to tell. They want the homeowner to go downstairs and scratch their pipes coming in to see if it's lit. If it is, we might be eligible to get you funds. So I looked at the brochure. So I, I called New York. I contacted your state's website. I sent an email. I said, I'm the bills administrator in Bills Garden City. This is like the weekend after I talked to your mother. I said, um, I want to do this for my community. Are funds available? I wrote back a Monday. There's no funds available. So that was a dead end. But now I'm looking to this uh, big infrastructure grant that the put sure. out. Are in this, in this new thing? Are there funds for communities? I ask each one to look for that. You know, it's not. It's not like you pick up the phone and say I need 50 million dollars. You know, this is a, a multi-million dollar project for you to do it. If individual homeowners do it, it'd be quite expensive. Um, like I said, it might be. If, if you have a lead line, you can't afford to change it which might be the case for someone with a 70 foot lead service line, maybe an in-house filter system is the solution to, to solve that problem at that location. I'm not recommending that, I'm just saying that there might be multiple ways to attack the problem on an on individual home basis and community strategy, but unless we're going to, and we're assuming that the lead line is the full contributor. I don't think the county knows that, I talked to them yesterday. I, I think that part of your homework, which is considerable, should be at what are our options as homeowners to, for mitigation of that? Is there a filter you can buy? Can we get a deal on them? Can, can, can we buy them as a village? Can we buy them in mass? Can we get a, a nice price on them? I don't know what it is, but and maybe you can find out if there's someone else other than H2M or if you're comfortable. We just gotta have a bunch of different options. 
we're getting a flight done pretty much every four yeah, And by the way, the H twin is not it's not like there's an H twin family and they have a farm team. The, like Jim Roberts came from New York City. These people come from other firms that you know they're, they're a collection of professionals who have to work at H twin So it's not like it's a uh, mindset. I'm not, I'm not criticizing at all. I just mean if, if they're already focused on this, maybe there's another place that maybe is, you know, a little bit more focused on the, the end user or more no, consumer no. products, and Wait. let's get them in here, you know. I've heard everything you've said tonight, believe me, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ariella. I am working as fast as I can. I've reached out to the professionals, I've reached out to the county. I'm doing my own research. I took everything in my work and said for a day took it as absolute truth on good faith, even though I had not heard that from the county yet. I am anxious to see what they say because they told me they told me there's no lead in your paint, in your pots, in your utensils. We talked extensively about this, um, and um, so I know we're not at the end of the story yet. Uh, I will get a communication, peace out, to people to alert them to this danger, uh, even though it's been out there in literature before and available to people. I will make sure that, uh, and I talked to you about this last night, Mayor. I, 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 I spoke to the mayor last night because we have a fire safety committee. Uh, meetings weren't very well, I thought. And I thought that, you know, there's a lot of things that might be outside of our controls of government that people should know about. Smoke detectors and carbon dioxide detectors in their homes. How many times have you heard of it? Who really does it? I said, maybe we should get in people's face, let service lines, uh, lock your cars for the police department, the department of the army, so lock your cars. There might be something that you want to use. Um, Joe Tadaro would like to speak. Oh, Joe, go ahead. Do you, Mayor, do you want him? Yes, he's, he's released to help. Yes, Joe, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes sir. I, I, just, I, just to, I just want to mention a couple of facts. Getting the federal funding, so supposedly there's, related to the, the new lead and copper rule, there's going to be a lot of fun for, for lead mine replacements. Uh, it's part of the reason why uh, my discussions with Ralph but to try and get out ahead of the regulation to, to identify the lead mines and, and get the first parts of the requirements down so that if funding does come out, you're, you're well in advance of, of a lot of people and uh, the, the funding would be easy to get because you have stuff in place already. So I don't know how much money is coming down the line, but hopefully it's supposed to be a lot. Now, you know, how, it's getting, how it's getting sorted out and distributed to the states is another story. And the job. Joe, just to, just to expand on that, from our conversations with the county and with you, it's not just identifying the lead service lines, we have to take an inventory of all these service lines in the community, not just identify one type of line, brass lines, copper lines, right, the whole inventory. First step is to inventory all the service lines, right? And then once, once you know that, then you can start to identify the lead service lines whether they, they should be replaced with, you know, and, and other things. And, and a copper, uh, certain, they changed the rules for requiring a, a corrosion control study, which are not required right now, if you have under 50,000 population, depending on what your action levels you hit. I mean, it's, it's, I don't want to get too deep into that, but but, but right now, a corrosion control study is not required, but that, that you mentioned that we're going to do one uh, anyway, just in case just to look at the pH of the outland, the water, and to see how it's affecting the lead of the mines. I will say that the AOP, from all our performance testing and all the pilot testing, uh, has no, has really no effect on inorganics, you know, no pH, alkalinity, uh, really most of the, the, the major corrosion, corrosion parameters, uh, AOP really doesn't have any influence on that, it doesn't change the, the properties of that. What, just, what would prevent us from starting that, that survey of the lines? Anything? They're, they're identifying, because it's, it's, the survey sounds like, okay, do you have a copper line, or a brass line? The idea is to understand what the requirements are, because when we do a survey, they might need four pieces of information from the household. Right, 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 right. So we're trying to identify what the, I've asked for the guidelines, I asked the county for the guidelines, they said all of that was PowerPoints. Joe's team has the guidelines and they dissected them and understand them, so he's sending me not only the guidelines, but what the specifics are about that survey. So we, that's all I was going to the board and asking for money for, because the survey, do I hire a third party company to knock in everyone's home, like we do when we change water meters? Yeah. I don't want to rely on the homeowners to go downstairs like Lancovas and scrape it with a, a pen knife and size of lead. I want to have an expert, a plumber or some team. And what's the timeline usually, Joe, on, uh, on like a full survey? Like, how long does that usually take? 
You've never done a, a, a village wide survey like that? Survey of uh, services? Yeah. Not the method. I may have been done in the late 80s when I first went in. But I, I don't mean in Garden City, I mean ever, anywhere. Yeah, not, not too many, to be honest. I mean, I, I haven't done one. But it shouldn't take, you know, once you get a system in place to go out, it shouldn't take that long. Of how many houses okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, house. and uh, Mr. Roberts, Jim Roberts, did send me um, a, a letter a couple weeks ago about how such a survey would be conducted. So, you know, we're trying to gather the pieces, but we have some momentum here. I don't have all the answers tonight, I'm sorry. Sure, no, no, I, I don't. But if you had all the answers, it would be a much quicker conversation. Uh, uh, so we can agree, though, we're going to post something, but also have a, have a life. We believe the first step to identifying the issues and also along the way it's a good thing to have should funds come down the road as a survey. Do we do we start aligning <coughs> ourselves on, on thinking about a village wide survey? Yes, that's what that's what we're planning to put together that comes to board with. I don't have it for tonight. No, 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 no. So no. you could you could if that's what you wanted. If if the board if the board feels it's appropriate thing to do this evening rather than some night, if you could award some amount of money for me to, uh, uh, of course, clear with you before I do anything, but you pre authorize it to now. Uh, Joe, what do you think a survey would cost? You, could you guys give me a, a order of magnitude number of what it might cost to do a, a 7,400 home survey, <coughs> plus businesses, too? <coughs> well, yeah, there would be a amount of time it takes to go into a house, how many you can do, and if you go by the water meters, when they install the water meters, no, I know that was that was a million dollar project. And 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 but well, the meters supposed to all, but now it's just labor, really. It has, there's no there's no cost to it. How long did but, it take to replace the meters? The meters, back in 2016, it probably took all summer because people would cancel appointments and yeah. and some people had uh, they had service lines that were not good to be run touch and they had to fix them. Yeah, so, I remember my house was. Yeah, it was drawn out, but I, I, it was really a matter of, because you have 7,500 homes and businesses, so it's a little while. There's probably a six or nine month project all over all along. But I think this is a little quicker. We're not changing meters. Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, you know. We certainly could put the information out, and, and people should start test getting now. And go live longer. Yeah, yeah well. The, as, an, in an, as an immediate step. Yeah, so if, if so let's say, let's say a person sitting in the audience here tonight, Calls the state on the loan, gets a kid sent to them, and tests. Okay, I have lead. Uh, what, so now the next step is you have a list. You know, we call the county, and is the county going to go in and test now, or are they? Or are they and I've been asked the county this. and said, so these hundred people who tested, and 25 who have high levels of lead. What happens now? Are you guys going to test? Are you expecting me to test? Are you expecting the homeowner to? You know. So they haven't clarified that for me. If I had the answers, I'd be already doing it, and you would have known about it already. You should know also that after I call the HQM on, on the 20th, authorizing the test my water, I, I wrote a full email to the board identifying my conversation with the mother. So I've kept everyone involved. The thing is, to just say to the community there's a lead problem out there and not be able to describe the parameters of the facts is a very scary thing for, for anyone because yeah. I don't have, like I don't have the answers here. All the information about your home, even about your medical condition that was told me everything I know doesn't help me solve your problem right now. So to open it up to 22,000 people in 7,500 homes based on no facts is a very... Uh, I, think, I think our concern came where we retested and we reproduced results four times and then we also were made aware of other homes in the neighborhood that had, had high lead and we brought that to the village's attention that we received a letter stating that you know, we've complied with everything the county and the state have asked us to do without a further action plan. Yes, we sir. just want timelines and an action plan. So by the way, uh, the, only, the only part of the compilation of the letter was because when we conducted the test on November 4th and we found lead as the county did, as a water supplier, I am required by law to give you that form letter with all the details. Mm -hmm. That was the requirements piece. Nobody else has asked us to do anything. That was directed by the existing law. The county's not asked us to do anything today. Everything we're doing and researching and discussing here tonight has been our own initiative as a water department and as consultants on behalf of the board and residents of this village. 
So we are waiting for the county to tell us. I, I'd love them to say, here's the smoking gun. I don't have a smoking gun. And I, don't, I expect it will take some time, and that's why I'm happy to hear that you will notify people, at least, yes. at a minimum, that this is a concern. Um, even if it's only for 25% of the town, 25% is a lot of families, it's a lot of children, it's a lot of, it's a lot of people who are affected by this. So, yeah, it's a lot of people who are affected by this. And please keep us updated. As only you know. Update on, on, you know, what you guys find, and, you know, I'm sure any information you guys come up with this is Ariel on my way home and I got tears in my eyes. I called my niece who's a pediatrician at Chan. I asked about body accumulation of blood in the bloodstream, how it comes out of the bone, like you know, explain to a baby. I, I got a, a, a course in this stuff on the way home. Uh, I was very concerned. It's still there. All right, so then um, the notification will be sent out, and then in terms of the corrosion testing, that you mentioned. I already went through us before. Okay, so when, when can we expect? That? Well, I don't know how long it takes. We've been doing, we've been testing pH sample then we every, since October 5th every week, because we had a blue water condition that we were hearing about, and we were trying to understand the dynamics of that. It's only coming out of one building, and so we lastly thought it was building specific, because we can't replicate it anywhere else. Um, so, um, that report is still pending, but we're still, every time I put a special email address out there for all water issues. <coughs> Uh, for brown blue water, and I've gotten like three blue water complaints in the last seven weeks. Both of them were filled bathtubs, and one was ice cubes I got yesterday. Two ice cubes out of a whole train. I don't know what's going on. It's in, it's it's uh, it's it's a hard problem to solve because it's not consistent. It's not predictable. And so it's, we're chasing all these different ghosts. Are they related? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the value of hiring a consultant. Yeah. So. I appreciate it. I, mean, I did speak for both of you and your mom multiple times, so I want to let you know we will do whatever we have to do and we can do. Thank you. Any other residents? Please come. Rainer, I would like to place, if it wasn't for them to send out a text to us, we wouldn't have known there was a problem. My water is being tested tomorrow. Um, and a lot of the families on that block have double and triple filters on their water, incoming water, they were telling me. The fellow across the street told me the other day he had his complete line replaced, lead line. And it was super expensive. So unless you're going to pay for it. Um, it. It's really a big problem. All of us have sent for the free kit. It came back within three days. It goes to, I'm sending mine to Port Washington. It gets two vials that you take at a different time, fairly close together. So we'll see where it goes. But um, you're, you're, on the, you're on the eastern end. I'm on the opposite side of them. Yeah. yeah, and actually, you can still see where Mark had his line replaced because it's right up against our side of the street. That's where the line runs. But don't forget, we've had all the construction going on, the old Sears building, everything is being churned up there, I'm sure. Um, we had that big fire, you know, on Washington. We've had Lots of things going on around that could affect the water. I don't know. I'm not a water expert. But and don't water. forget, we, we just finished the tower. The tower yes. will on. Right. So follow my line of thinking. <coughs> Where are we getting oh, pressure right. from? We're getting, believe me, I know we don't. No, let's go there. Let's, for the benefit more. of everyone. Where are we getting we're, our pressure we're getting from? Our, we're getting our pressure from the blue control micro. So ordinarily, the water tank that we're replacing, we're actually going to fill it with water in the next three weeks, by the way. The water, the water pressure in the system usually comes from the atmosphere. That's why the tank is so high. With the tower offline, the only, the only way to maintain pressure sufficient enough to provide drinking water and firefighting capability is through the booster pumps. So when pressure drops in a section of town, the booster pumps nearest to that will pump up and ramp up the pressure until it stabilizes. So when people turn on their sprinkle systems at 4 a.m. or they shower in the morning and whatever they're doing, the pressure's fluctuating, which by the way stirs up sediment in the lawns. That's why we get so many brown water complaints. I can't
can't wait for the until we sell the water farm. I can't wait till the tower. I can't wait till the tower comes back online because that'll calm down the system, it'll stabilize with atmospheric pressure, and the booster pumps will play their normal role of just taking the water out of the tanks and putting it into the system. They won't be applying pressure. Right, but to your point of stirring up sediments, we've basically been going for five well, years. I'm well aware that it's got to be everywhere. Yeah. For sure. I mean, this is a big problem. When I just, we're actually, we're actually and we gonna, should have been notified if it wasn't for them to send it out. I sent it to everybody, and I got it from somebody else from a different part of town. One person has tested water at least eight times. I mean, they're on top of it. But it shouldn't be. We're only one block long. And we're going to fight. I mean, there's got to be an answer to this somehow. And I appreciate your help. And no, I, I, I forget your name, but, but so, so, so the thing is that your side of the street, you're right on top of the main, so on the on the east side. So when you test your water at the intervals in the test, your the water flushing through your system, getting from the main to your house quicker. I'm not sure if the test is sufficient. When they test their water on the other side of the street, they need a lot more time to get to my main to test the main. So the more the water the testing is in the service line in the house plumbing, which is exposed to solder and the lead. So these so that's why each house is different. That's why the test the tests tell you there's a problem with the type where it is. And that's that's what we're gonna experience. But it might be in the piping because I have lots of copper or my heating system and everything. No, no, it's, it's a copper. Number. I have had pinholes galore. And it's all being replaced. And I think Mr. and Mrs. Ariello also said that the pipes the pipes get coating inside over the years, but they yeah. the patina. Right. And that's where they're indicating the pH could play a, a role in every growth. But exactly. that's that's uh, that's another thing that there's protections that occur in the way the plant works. Well thank you. Any other comments on Lanagen Islands? Please state your name.
and I went down, and the, the main line comes to the house. It took a piece of sandpaper, just rubbed it over, over the pipe, and it turned out to be a nice powder color, a nice little like, powder. But eventually, I did have a line change. And one thing that I didn't realize that he told me is that lines under the ground are attacked by electrolysis. When you get these small pin holes in, in the line and everything else, that's true electrolysis. That's what's causing the little hole. By the time I had my line pull out, uh, I had it from my house to the street. It, it looked like a yard, a large pickle hole. It had so many holes in it. And he says, over the years, that's what happens. The electrolysis in the ground causes the little pin hole. So, and also, you're saying that you're treating the water with, with uh, ozone and oxygen and so on. Uh, it's not always water in the line, sometimes you just have the air in the line. And oxygen does rust lines uh, or connection. So that's, a, that's also a possibility where you might be getting some fatalities from. Uh, just natural causes of, of chemical reactions within the line itself. But those pinholes are, are what I understand is through electrolysis. Just to give you some information of what I live through. Thank you, Bob. Right. Any other comments on Zoom or in the audience? Mr. Liberty, you want to speak? I don't want to have a comment on water, so I would. I'd like you to finish that subject. There are Any other comments on, on the water issue? Okay. Tom? Mr. Lundberg. You're welcome back. I have a simple issue. Uh, <clears throat> so I, uh, to take us back, uh, we know the board is now amending, appealing a particular statute of the building code, which imposes uh, penalty fees on existing uh, permit holders uh, who seek to legalize work. So I, I, that process has been made clear to me. I think it's clear that it does not apply to residents who seek permits to install new air conditioning units. And I am such an applicant, so I'm seeking to get a permit to install a new air conditioning unit and pay the fees. I recently went to the building superintendent and asked him if I, he would issue me such a permit in light of all the discussions that we've had and the, and the revisions that's supposed to take place with this particular section of the code which applies to existing permit holders and he told me he could not so that I would have to pay a penalty fee of $2,000. Now we've had all the discussions about this so I would like the mayor to take some action to have a resident like myself obtain a building permit, which clearly I'm entitled to. So here I am. I'd like to get it done before the winter sets in. Otherwise, I don't, I don't know where I am to go. I, I, I think. Well, Tom, I've, I've asked the building superintendent to look into this. He's done it. I'm sorry. I've, I'm asked the building, I've asked the building superintendent to look into this, and he's okay. done a very thorough analysis. Giuseppe, do you want to make a comment about this? If necessary, could be. Mayor, as per the board's request, um, as the emails I've sent over to all of uh, the board and yourself, as far as the uh, research uh, that we've done, um, you know, my team and I have done an extensive, I mean, extensive research, 67 municipalities, um, as far as their um, fees and their requirements, what they ask for applications. Um, 67, uh, 20, 23, uh, with those, um, with the, with that review, 23 out of the 67 are two times the fee, 16 out of the 67 are three times the fee, a lot like the village of Garden City, so we're about 24% of that. Um, there's one village that's four times the fee, there's seven, seven out of the you know, 67 that have no fee but are in speaking about doing a fee because there is such a thing that they're requiring. So they're, they're looking into, into doing that. 
Uh, they haven't set forth a number, but they're looking to do, if not two, at least three times the fee, depending on um, what, what they choose to do on that. Uh, 20 out of the 67 are various fees. Now, various fees mean they're, they're different percentages. On some occasions, they are more than three times the fee if you do the mathematics on, on a, a cost per construction uh, per project. So, uh, it's, that's it's all residential work? It's, it's all residential work, yeah. Um, some villages charge more for construction, some uh, for con commercial, some are equal. But the question I think Mr. Ambrose just posed is, is how does he get a building permit? Based on the situation. Mr. Lemberti has to file for a mechanical and electrical permit and pay three times the fee because he doesn't have the benefit of a building permit. So I cannot be here to waive any fees. I have no proof and documentation that there is a, a permit for that. So he, in order to, to do that, he has to file for a mechanical and electrical permit. So based on the, based on the, the permits and the code of section 4-2017. So, but that's not the point. We're not talking about fees. We're talking about the law. I've spent a fair amount of time. You read, read the statute. It says every existing permit, every permit holder who seeks to legalize work has to comply with this penalty clause or whatever. We've we 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 discussed the concept of the so, so, so yes, we've, we've done that. I understand that, but the point is, I'm not interested. The, the law says it doesn't apply to me. I, I think you can get past that. It doesn't law. apply to you because you're, when you're applying, you're not a permit holder. That's what you're saying. I'm an applicant now. I'm, applicant. I'm an applicant. I'm, the statute, I can tell you, like, I don't want to get involved in, the, in, the, in discussions with lawyers and others, but the point is the plain language of the statute. You've got to start. This is where I was three months ago. You have to start with the language of the statute. Mr. B, legal counsel, when I put that question to him twice at the last meeting, he simply said, it's the policy of the building department. So we keep circling back. So somebody, I, I, that's the issue. Does the law apply to me as it stands? Well, that's the question. It, it, that's the issue. He asserts it is. I, I can't persuade him. He's done it. So you'll have to resolve this. It's not how many feet, how many dollars you pay. It's, let's, and let's you're rewriting the law. I understand, Tom. Let's, I want to get this resolved for you, Tom, for everyone else. As for all of us, right now, the, law says, the way it's written, it states permit holder, correct? It does, yes. Right. So, are we addressing him as a permit holder or as an applicant? Or is he applying for a permit that he doesn't have uh, currently? So he's got to apply for it's to maintain it's it's a apply for a new system. Well, it's not entirely correct because he got, he's applying for a new condenser. The HVAC system is already currently in the, in the house, so we have to inspect the whole the components of the system. So he's applying for one component of the entire system. So he's a permit holder, not an applicant. He's. He's going to be an applicant when he files a permit that he's requesting. <laughs> look, look, this, so, this is an exercise of the English language. If, if you, if, I understand if, perfectly. If you, if you want to discuss yeah. the idea of a permit holder versus an applicant, otherwise we're going to be all night. But that language controls. Well, I'm not sure how much more I can add to the discussions that we've had over the last several board meetings. In the first instance, uh, the building superintendent has construed the building code uh, in a way in which in order to become the permit holder, a permit would be issued for uh, the in installation of the condenser, which in turn requires a mechanical and an electrical. Simultaneously with the issue of that permit, he would instantly be a permit holder and subject to the payment of the legalization fee of three times the fee he should, the permit he should have had at the beginning. The building department has made <clears throat> what I think is a reasonable interpretation of that code to say, we're not going to grant you the permit until you pay the fee. I'm prepared to say that that is a reasonable construction of the code. I have already supplied to the board, uh, though I think it not necessary, I have supplied, provided a draft of a local law that would clarify it to say that this is intended to mean not only someone who at this instant is a holder, but someone who is an applicant to become the holder. 
and at such point as the board wishes to consider that legislation, a public hearing can be scheduled. In the meantime, the building superintendent's position is one which I believe is a reasonable interpretation of the code, and that's where we are. So may I suggest to you that that's an unreasonable interpretation of the code, because if you read the code, in other instances, it talks about filing for a permit is a process. It doesn't talk about existing permit holders with respect to the rest of the code. And we've already been through this discussion where the existing permit holders section of the code was to deal with the problem of open permits in 1960, 17, about two, <laughs> it's tough to be 90 because it's hard to get used to the 2000. <laughs> Where we are today. But anyway, so the point is that the whole section was dealt with a particular situation that it dealt with open permits. The section itself deals with open, deals with existing permits. The language does not say applicant. You can't twist, torture, and, and reverse language in some way to get to that. And, and, to, and for the village council to do that, I find very, uh, I think that's, that, that's just bad statutory interpretation. All right, so and we know that, okay? We know that there are termination sections that, so that, so that that section was dealt with the purpose. Now they're saying that you're gonna amend that statute to now provide applicant is another admission that the statute doesn't apply. All right, just think about this. You have existing permit holder. Everybody says it's confusing. It's not applicable. We need to draft it. And now he's going to draft it to put applicant in. That's the way you want to treat residents. You amend the statute to now provide something that was not in the statute and apply it to them. I don't think that makes any sense. Well, that's not totally yet. So here we are. Here we are. Tom, I, I want to put it as simply as possible. And you know I'm an architect. When you do a job and you don't file for a permit, yes. you start construction or do yes. some work, you are subject to a penalty. That's because the statute says it. Every code every code to this basic this basic process. You have to get a permit to do some work. I did. Right? Okay. You got a permit, but it did not include the air conditioning system. Correct, because the architect or the, or the contractor didn't put it in. I'm like a lot of other people. I understand. Again, I think the opinion here, the building department has an opinion, the legal counsel has an opinion, I think we have to move on. The what? We have to move on. Well, what do we do? Well, Wait for him to amend the statute so it says, it says applicant and then what I file? <laughs> Maybe you do. <laughs> Let me say this. Let me just let me just finish with this. Every one of you are educated, intelligent people, and you guide your life on what you read in terms of instructions, the doctor's reports. Everything is done that way. All right. So in this instance, we're taking very plain language. Every permit holder. It's twisted to, in some convoluted way to take an applicant and interpret it that way. And at the same time, you're going to amend the law to put an applicant. Now, if all of you think that makes a lot of sense, I'm very surprised. I think you realize that that statute doesn't apply. And the only thing you're trying to do is use counsel two ways. One to, one to approve a misinterpretation and then to correct the misinterpretation by inserting the very word that you say should be there in the first place. If, if that's how you apply your minds, I'm very shocked. No, I'm because, first, okay. first of all, the Department of Buildings has a process. They do reviews of applications. I think they've come to a conclusion that you need to pay the fine before you get the permit. Am I correct? Is that what you guess? Correct. Right. So, I can't slice it any other way for you, Tom. I understand that, but the only way to slice it is to understand what, the, what it's about. That's why you need and to it. That's so why you want to make it clearer. So, we want the village council to look at that law, look at that resolution, and make it clearer. So, in the future, you've made a very good point. You've made a very good point. 
You've been here four times. I understand that, but this is the first time we're getting, I'm getting a decision, which I understand. I thought that you recognized that the language didn't apply, but if you're telling me that you recognized the language didn't apply, and now you're going to, now you're going to correct the this out oh, time. You said the language didn't <laughs> apply. You're the one that made the I French, I differentiation think. between permit holder, okay. right, and applicant. Okay. You're the one. Okay, okay. So, so, that's so, why, so that's why they have lawsuits. Okay, okay. okay. All right. I, I understand. Okay. Uh, you, I understand uh, what you said. I don't need any more. Thank you. We have somebody on Zoom. Would you like to unmute yourself? IPhone. Anyone on Zoom? This is Steve Alarney, 39 Meadow Street. Good evening. Uh, two, two comments. One, um, going back to the uh, fire safety meeting last night, I, I did try to raise my hand at the end, and I, I didn't find it in time on my phone, and the meeting adjourned. But there was discussion about having a training building within the village, and, and an advantage to that would be that surrounding fire departments could train with us, and we could all have the same type of training and work together. And then later on in the meeting, I heard that I think Franklin Square has a, a, a training site, Linbrook, and some others are coming online. So maybe rather than us build one for other towns to come in, maybe we could utilize what is already built in neighboring towns and get the same advantage that was discussed about having multiple districts uh, trained together. That was one comment. And the other issue regarding the the water the testing that was taking place. Um, I know Ralph, I think, mentioned that there's lead in the fire hydrants, but is there any place that the water could be tested near someone's home prior to it going into the line that goes into the house? So is there an access point in the water main that could be tested where you can see what is the condition of the water in the middle of the street before it goes into a homeowner's line. Um, so Steve, so first of all, I just want to make sure people understand that um, the fire hydrant is a is a valve. It's, it doesn't have water in it. It has a valve that when it opened up, water comes from the main and rushes out. The newer hydrants don't have um, the brass components that contain lead. And I talked to the health department, they actually believe that if you were to test the hydrants, any lead in there would flush out immediately because of the volume of water. So, so that might be a testing point because the only, the only place I have is the input and the only output I have are the faucets in the home and the hydrant system that are close to the areas. Um, so that's, I think that answers your question. Chief, do you want to speak about the training facility? <coughs> Hi Steve, how are you? It's Chief Moody. Um, the training facility was you know, proposed for the volunteer members for Garden City due to the lack of uh, the buildings that we have now. And with this facility, it would intrigue other departments that we work with to work together. Um, not every fire department in, in the county has this ability to have these training facilities. Um, it's going to be a huge asset for the village the fire department to increase our training and to entice people and other people that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis to come and learn and work together. Chief Murray, could you fill Steve in and the residents uh, the training facility at the water building and what happened when you were training? So currently the fire department we train at the old incinerator building located in the village yard. Um, we had a drill one night and one of the steps rusted away and broke underneath the fireman. Luckily, no injuries were uh, happened or occurred. But at this time, this building is condemned at the moment until we get a new staircase. Uh, Mr. Swazi and, and Giuseppe are in the process now of replacing the entire staircase to make sure it's up to code and safe for our members to train appropriately. Thank you. Any other questions? Having seen no, no other questions, I ask a motion to close the meeting.